Welcome, people. All right. I'm a new YouTube sensation, as a lot of you people might know. I just started out, so my camera work ain't the best. I don't have all the effects, the all the, all the snazzy stuff, but I'm getting there. Today, I'm just going to show you how I package a bit of a mini growl here. So it's a Toll Toys Commando slash Snake Eyes Action Man Mint on card. So I auctioned this um, oh, a couple of weeks ago. It was on a payment plan, so hey, it's time to post, and here we go. So this is how I do it. You may or may not agree with me. I don't get a lot of broken or any broken stock. Now, a lot of people say to me, oh, something like that's easy. Just stick it in a star case or an acrylic. You're good. Now, that's bulldust, because look at this. I just got this the other day. Like, so that was just chucked in the star case for me. I mean, it's not a big deal. It was a beta of card anyway. Um, but I had the gun taped in there, so I was like, oh, yeah. Not bad, I'll grab it, but yeah, that was just sent in a star case, and what do you got? You got a bit of a bit of a head pop, because in a star case or acrylic, same thing. There's no way of securing, there's no way of fortifying that bubble in either of those packaging methods. So um, you can put it in a bomb-proof box, but the uh, Mr. Australia Post or whoever, USPS, whoever you use, throws it sideways or whatever, and well, what do you got? You know, he's out the bubble. And um, that's a vintage item, pretty much destroyed. I mean, this had a crack already, I knew that. Um, but yeah, anyway, it's, you know, now it's a loose figure, pretty much. So, um, you know, obviously you don't want that to happen with um, high-end items. So, I take a lot of pride in the way I package my stuff. I sell a lot of high-end stuff. This is a killer. So, this is how I do it. I will use a star case, but I shall use additional protection. Now, I've already pre-cut lengths of bubble wrap, cling wrap, etc., etc to try and make this process via video slightly more, less boring. This isn't everyone's cup of tea, but I'm just showing you how it's done. So this one's got two bubbles. I'm gonna fortify around the bubble, each bubble with first bubble wrap and then cling wrap to hold the bubble wrap in place. Now I'll show you as I go. Um, you just don't want the pressure of that figure. I'm not gonna move around, but if it goes side to side, just try to post up and down, whatever. You don't want that pushing out on the bubble and cracking it from the inside, then it's gone. You know, and you've got a grail in the toilet. So, it may be overkill. Some people think I'm mad, including my wife, for the amount of effort I put in packaging some of this stuff, and I trust no one. I don't trust Australia Post. I don't trust the guy that comes and picks it up, or I don't trust the guy that I'll give my money to at Australia Post. It. He puts it down wrong, and um, you know, or he puts something on top of it. So, you got to, eliminate every single little possibility of damage. So what I'm doing is, and as I said earlier, this is not probably the most exciting video you're ever gonna get. I'll be the first to admit that. You can fast forward, you can turn off, I don't care. I'm just doing this so uh, maybe raises an awareness, someone sells a killer piece. So what I've done is I put a pre-cut little piece of bubble wrap around there, around the small bubble that the um, bag came in. Use a bit of sticky tape, which is just on the bubble wrap, so obviously no risk of it touching the pre-cut thing of cling wrap doubled over. I'll wrap that around my bubble wrap reasonably tightly, but not over tightly, not to put pressure on, but just tightly. So, I mean, that bag inside, the accessory bubble is ridiculously small, um, and that's not going to put any pressure on the bubble at all. But look, as complete as set I am. So that top mini bubble is now fortified. Let's do that with the main bubble. Here's a piece of bubble wrap I prepared earlier. So these can be tricky to get around, but there's always a way. The Motu, vintage Motu mocks are very difficult because the top of the cards are on a sick angle. So it's very hard to get the bubble wrap to stay. Sometimes it can't even be done. Um, I just sold a Thunder Punch Thunder Punch or Flying Fist? Flying Fist, I think it was, the other day that had um, a real killer slant on the bubble. So I wasn't able to fortify it this method. I had to use like foam, the foam around it. Um, so I just made it a little bit more difficult. But Joe's and Star Wars generally have got straight edge bubbles and you can do this pretty easily. So there I've got the bubble wrap around the bubble. So if Commando or Snake Eyes, whatever you want to call them, Gets shuffled around a bit, and man happens to hit push on the inside of the bubble from the inside. It's not gonna 
crack it because I've got the bubble behind it is going to have some pressure on it from the cling wrap and bubble wrap to keep it from popping. You know, I've pre cut my cling wrap a bit too long. So, not too tight. The cling wrap naturally holds. Put a little bit of tape on it to keep it in place. Now, that tape's got absolutely no chance of hitting bubble card or anything like that, just on itself on the bubble and the thing wrap. So if you fold that over a bit, that's how I see my bubbles. Now, I will use a star case. That is for additional protection. Number two is. Air pocket at the top. Air pocket on the opposite side of the bubble. So I'll explain why, sorry, that's not the opposite side, left and right, I can't figure that out. I'll explain the method to my madness in a minute. And then, that goes in the, into the star case beautifully. And I'll show you what I've done in a moment. Now, flick the star case on. I don't trust trust no one or anything like the X-Files. I tape the star, star case edges, just in case it were somehow to pop off. When the happy boy opens it up, takes the bubble wrap off it, and then just in case the star case doesn't get and drops on the floor, that will be a tragic event. So anyway, what I've done is, and I'll come a bit closer. Air pockets slide them. So some by, somehow, by some miracle chance, these two boxes are compromised and these, there's pressure put on this bubble, on this um, star case. Those air pockets will hold off. The air, air pockets are probably about an inch, maybe longer, an inch thicker than the bubble itself. So it will hit the air pockets first and won't get anywhere near the bubble. So that's to protect the top of the bubble. Obviously the bubble wrap and cling wrap around the edges is to, call it to protect um, Mr. Snake Eyes or whatever your three three quarter inch figure is from coming out. Now, here we go. So, semi step one. Step two is just a bit of extra bubble wrap. And then I'll get my Christmas present wrapping practicing year round doing these dudes I sell a ton of mostly Star Wars mint on cards but I sell a ton of mint on card stuff pretty much daily basis um, I had a, I've had recently I think it's a bit too long recently had a stack of vintage Motu mocks and they're they're pretty tricky too um, I'll do a video on one of them one time as well because this bubble is so bloody big and the figures are so heavy, those Motu figures that they can put a lot of pressure on the inside of the bubble. Alright, so there you go, that's the first step or whatever you're going to call it. Then, box number one, so it's a, I always get a super sturdy box, it's got these things built in to stop it from pushing down the side rail sort of thing. So, you know, you can pretty much, I wouldn't, but you can pretty much stand on that and it shouldn't do pretty much any damage to that. So that goes in box number one. That fits quite nice. So I've got extra bubble wrap on the top and bottom to pressure out the top and bottom. And then I go to one of my favorites. Now I've got a couple of clients that love me for this. I own a, I bought a big uh, paper shredder. I like recycling. So I shred a ton of paper. Ha ha ha, so I use that on the sides. Um, makes a sick mess on your end. I try to keep it pretty clean here, although my missus won't again agree with me. There's paper, shred of paper all over my house. It seems to grow legs, this stuff, and go everywhere. But anyway, um, I actually met up with a few collectors on last November, a flat Sydney. I met up with a whole bunch of dudes. Um, it was organized for, for a Facebook group, The Collector's Edge. It was really, really great night. There's some people I dealt with for 10 years that I'd never met in person. So it was really cool to meet them and whatnot. Anyway, long story short, I bumped into a dude that um, doesn't necessarily like my shred of paper. And he just gave me so much crap all night about <laughs> shredded paper. And I can't repeat, I 
I can't repeat the language that was used, but um, yeah, shredded paper is not loved by everyone, but it's very useful. So then, um, then I'll just wrap around. So that's a really strong box I've got going there. Like I said, I could pretty much stand on that. Obviously, I'm not going to try, but it can put a ton of pressure on that and it won't um, compromise those two side struts of the box. So like I said to you all at the start, this might not be the most exciting YouTube video you watch, but hey, I'm lame. I admit that. And I don't care. Um, my toys will get to you safely. Uh, I sold some real, really, really expensive pieces. Um, I sent some um, five grand, ten grand items all over Australia. I sent five, ten, fifteen, twelve grand items to the States, you know, OS. Uh, I've never had an issue. Um, and that's why people have confidence to purchase from me. A lot of people approach me to sell their um, grail pieces and expensive, fragile items because they don't want to do what I'm doing right now. They're too scared to, or, you know, don't have the confidence in sending this stuff anywhere safely. You know, it's, it's not for everyone. A lot of people hate it for some reason. I'm um, I've got this weird little sickness. So again. This is an Australia Post extra large box. These are real strong. They're fortified on all four corners. So again, you can just about step on these boxes without a problem. But um, obviously that's not gonna happen. I nearly forgot one thing. I've got some pre-cut lengths of, this is just a base liner for the box. Just some bubble wrap, bottom layer. Just gonna put an extra layer because why not? So this box goes in there. That fits quite quite well. And then we got one of my other favourite items. Air pockets. Air pockets on either side. I'll bring this close to you guys in a second so you can see how it looks. Box, so figure, star case, bubble wrap, two, two three layers, box, um, air pockets on either side. And then, we're going back to old paper, shredded paper. I put a couple of layers, well, layers about, maybe an inch or so's worth of shredded paper on the top, for a bit of cushioning. If you are excited about this entire process, feel free to let me know in the comments. Uh, obviously, dogs are us, geeks are us, whatever you want to call it. I'm a member. <laughs> Put this away. Piece of, um, another piece of bubble wrap. Triple layer. Just do the top coat. And there you go. So that will close over. You got anti shock, you got that is super strong. Uh, I'm not going to label it now because I'm not gonna, I won't address it because, um, yeah, the new owner doesn't need to advertise who it is, but um, obviously I'll address it. I will do packaging tape one, two, three, one, two, three. Yeah, I can do, I can do a couple where the address isn't. I do a ridiculous amount of packaging. Pretty much covers the entire, more or less covers the entire box with packaging tape. And yeah, you pretty much can't see paper or card when I'm done. So I'll go over about eight, side, eight ways on either side. And you can bet that my family, Loves that noise. That noise. Think of beauty. 
Anyway, that's pretty much the process. I'll address it. And this is obviously 100% being sent express post. Um, fully insured. If you've watched my auction, you'd know how much this went for. If you don't, then it went for a fair bit of money. Only way to find out is to join my group and have a look. Keep you in a bit of suspense, but um, that's me. So I sell a lot of high-end stuff. As I said, people hate doing this. For some reason, I love it. There you go. So that took me about 15 minutes on this video and I probably spent 10 minutes pre-cutting bits and pieces and laying out my area here. So <clears throat> I'm not quite done yet. So it's probably a half an hour job to pack a, a vintage mock. Um, He-Man's motos can be a little bit longer. Some of those rotars, those double, bu double bubbles and really double massive cards take longer. It is what it is. I love doing it for some reason. I think I'm the only person that really likes packaging those things, but that's me. Like I said, it's not the most exciting process, but it's what you've got to do to get these items. They're 40 odd years old, 30, 40 years old, safely to the new owners. Um, and that's how you build trust. You might not like that, the way I did it, you might have a different way of doing it. There are a couple of methods of doing it, but for crying out loud, do not ship straight in a star case or acrylic and just chuck it in a box and think you've done the right thing. Like that is, this is fair income, like, you know, it's, this is a vintage item. I mean, it's only a beat up, but every time that happens, one, there's one less in, in circulation and that really sucks. Um, you know, they're not more coming out, obviously. It's not modern crap, this is vintage, piece of history. Anyway, thanks for looking. Subscribe, um, I'm gonna try and do some bits and pieces like this. <laughs> There's a lot of people that will not find this interesting in the slightest. Some people might watch two seconds of this. You might watch it all. Hey, if I educated one person, um, if I taught one poor person that acrylics are no good or something like that, so shipping or something along those lines, then um, you know, I've achieved something. Otherwise, thanks for looking. Um, I'll keep the random YouTube stuff coming. I quite enjoy it. And let's see how we go. Thanks for looking. Go check me out on um, Facebook. The link is after this video and probably before the video. Derek Finch's Toy Sales Group. Uh, you got some vintage items you want to sell, high-end stuff. I'm happy to auction it for you, sell it for you, package it for you, all that kind of stuff. Get in touch with me. Um, there's numerous ways to get in touch with me via Facebook, email, whatever. Thank you very much. Peace out. There's more coming.